but I have a goal of wanting to be more strong and more resilient in my life. I'll tell you a little bit about my story and kind of how this came about, but that means to me a goal is that I've set a goal to get 10 pull-ups in 12 months. So the idea is just to kind of track this countdown with my people on YouTube and on Instagram. I'm a coach myself, but I also think it's very important as a coach to continuously grow and challenge yourself and set goals for yourself as well. So I'm also doing this to help inspire my clients who I know deal with struggles with nutrition, struggles with public speaking, struggles with their health and wellness, mindset, and occupational stress, all these different things that I work with my clients on, I want to also let them know, like I work on things myself too, and I set goals for myself, and I'm not scared at all of failing. I might not get there in 12 months. That's okay. I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm gonna give it my best effort, and I'm really excited and up for the challenge. So it's June now, June 2022. So next June, 2023, I want to be able to do 10 pull-ups, body weight pull-ups. Right now I can do zero. And so here's a little bit about my story. I have had back pain for as long as I can remember. That's really some of the reason why I got into wellness. I was, especially yoga and Pilates and some of those different modalities is in my early childhood, I was recognized as having scoliosis. The doctors just said, we'll watch it, we'll wait and see. In college, early college, I started cycling, running, doing a lot of endurance type of, and, and being pretty competitive with it, at least recreationally. Um, so I got into long distance running and man, the pain just really came out. I had crazy sciatic pain in my early 20s. They wanted to do, the surgeons wanted to do a spinal fusion back then. I elected to do more of a conservative route to do physical therapy lots and lots and lots of physical therapy. I elected to do more yoga, more mind body, more Pilates, and try to learn you know, how to, how to work within my own body. I wasn't ready for surgery at that time, and so I really didn't wanna go that route. It, it did end up being a good choice for me personally and my body, and it also again, like I said, opened me up to these different areas beyond endurance, strength training and um, like recovery type of work and, and the breath and how some of those things are really, really important for us to feel strong in our body. So fast forward a little bit, after having our first child in 2016, my back pain really flared up postpartum. I had very long postpartum period. It took me probably two years to feel strong again. A lot of medication for my low back, a lot of shots. I did not do an MRI then, so I don't know if I had herniated any discs, but at that point I knew I was dealing with disc degenerative disease, retrolithesis, which is kind of like a backward slipping of the spinal uh, the vertebra, and then uh, stenosis, so narrowing of the spinal canal. I also knew that I had the lumbar scoliosis as well, so I had some of these things showing up in from earlier MRIs, and they kind of knew, let's just treat, treat this with steroid injections, with medication, with physical therapy again. So I did physical therapy again. This At that time, in 2019, before we had our second child, I actually took the long road of rehabbing myself postpartum through physical therapy first, then through my own exercise and wellness programming. I got back really strong and I remember this specifically. It was 2019, we were headed, we were actually in Peru, in Lima, my husband and I and a couple of friends getting ready to hike the Machu Picchu. So we were doing a five day hike down the Salcante tra uh, Trek. So it was really intense hike, but before that, we were walking in this park in Lima and I saw a pull-up bar and I just like jumped on the pull-up bar and I did, I think eight, maybe 10 pull-ups without any problem. I just, you know, cranked them out. I was feeling strong, I was feeling resilient. I did not know it at the time. I actually was very early pregnant with our second child. After our second child, I had one of the hardest two years of my life. So 18 months postpartum, about a month postpartum, I found out that I had herniated three discs. I had had a multiple organ prolapse and just 
major tissue issues in my pelvic floor and in my low back. I was really in a lot of pain. I'm talking major chronic pain, can't pick my children up, can't sleep at night, can't stand up when I get up in the morning, just hunched over, excruciating pain. I toughed it out in physical therapy for 18 months. I did all the injections, all the, all the painkillers, all the um, steroids, uh, all the anti-inflammatories, all the nerve blocking medication. I was miserable. Uh, so much anxiety, so much stress from this chronic issue. I didn't share a lot of what I was going through with friends and family because it's very hard to describe that type of pain, it's invisible. You know, you can't see back pain. People would look at me and, you know, think I look semi-fit after having a child um, and have no idea how consuming that type of pain is. And so I, um, I get kind of emotional, you know. Um, it's, it's a very difficult thing to go through. Anybody who's had back pain or herniated any disc. Um, understands it is emotionally, physically, mentally exhausting to go through. And so I do what I did what anybody else did who's going through that. You're looking up videos, you're trying everything, chiropractic, physical therapy, all the medications, um, inversion table, you know, like everything, acupuncture. I did it all. I did my very best effort to be conservative, but I ended up having to get with a neurosurgeon and get a microdisectomy. So I ended up having to get at least one of those, the very, very severe disc, L4, L5 for me, repaired. And I still have a herniated disc at L3, L4 and L5, S1. So I've had that surgery back in, and again, again today is 2022. I had the microdisectomy nine months ago in 2021, August of 2021, and I've been recovering, doing physical therapy, still doing injections, still doing medication, just to keep it all together. Again, it's not something I talk a lot about because it has been very difficult having young children and you know, saying, I can't lift you up, I can't pick you up, I can't do this. Like, the limitations I've felt in my body and also kind of protecting that low back. You know, you get a lot of fear for movement after you've gone through something like this at my age. I'm 36 now. And so it's just, again, it's, it's very taxing. It's very difficult. But I'm finally at a place where I have been able to start to exercise a little bit more regularly, build some strength. And also I'm working with a, a coach, a personal trainer because I believe in the coaching process so much um, as a coach myself that sometimes we need to gotta, we gotta go outside of ourselves to kinda get help sometimes. To The help comes from within, healing does come from within. It has to really be something you want, I believe. But having somebody to move you through and to coach you through is, is also very helpful. I think it just gets you there a little bit quicker. So I have a coach myself and I was talking to him it's been a few years since I went to Peru and I did those pull-ups on my own without all this pain, without all this just excess even weight, you know, that I have now from not being able to exercise as much as I've, I like to. Um, and I said, I saw this picture pop up on my memories and I want to do 10 pull-ups. I'm going to give myself a year. But that is one of my goals when we set up our first goal session. You know, I was very clear. This is one of my goals. Obviously, I want to be able to hinge and move and not overuse my lumbar back, but strengthen the muscles surrounding my hips and my legs and all that, my core. I definitely want all that. And I'm working towards that. I have been working towards that. But I want to be able to lift my own body weight, A, because I've it's definitely told when you have a prolapse, when you've suffered a multi, um, multi-organ multi prolapse that you're not supposed to do heavy lifting and, and hard things. And you kind of get this mentality of like, you have to be very careful. I want to kind of prove that wrong in my own body. And so with that picture as my motivation, with that video of me doing those pull-ups, 
with me wanting to really feel more strong and resilient in my body, I set, and me as a coach, I set myself a goal for this year. So this is where the 12 to 10 pull-up challenge for myself or you, if you want to try it, has, um, has been where it came from. So I know that was a really long intro video. I can be long-winded. I apologize, um, but <laughs> it's me. Um, and so if you want to join me, just kind of comment below. Let's just start getting engaged. Send me your stories. Send me what, what, what you're facing. We're all going through struggles, and I get that. But we can be stronger together when we share those struggles, I believe. And so let me know what kind of brought you here. And if you're going to do it, what month you're starting. That's helpful. And then if there's anybody out there who has like really good tips for building strength to do pull-ups. I mean, I have a few of my own as a trainer and as a physiologist myself. But I can always learn. And I, if you have any great tips or want to link some good videos out there, for us all to benefit from, go ahead and do that in the comment section below. And let's see, I will see, I will continue to track this journey every month. I'll throw up a few videos and show some progress of where I'm at and, and, and how I'm moving forward. But um, I am excited to embark on this journey with you and I hope you will be with me and cheer me on. Have a great day, breathe well and peace. Bye y'all.